Ladies, gentlemen, and Glade Runners of all ages, I'd like to introduce you to a game that could only be described as an absolutely adorable cure for depression. This is Tiny Glade, and if you haven't heard of it, I wanted to be sure that you did. The game tags itself as a small diorama builder, where you essentially doodle old-timey architecture across a procedurally generated world. It's like opening a massive set of Lego without any sort of instruction manual and just being given the largest room imaginable to do it within. And I say that as someone who loves Lego, I mean, here's a tree that I put together last week. Back on topic, this game is just a lovely, relaxing, calming way to spend some time, and if you're someone who enjoys things like creative mode in Minecraft, for an example, or just the aesthetic side of city builders, this is absolutely worth taking a look at. The entire purpose of Tiny Glade is to remove as many restrictions as possible, making it as free to your own imagination as it can be. Then alongside that, it just has the absolute cutest visuals and the aesthetics and all of that, to the point of random animals just exist exist around the world, they can walk into your little city, and you can pet them with your cursor, which they then also react to with little hearts. This is your world, it's your creation, and it's just beautiful. There is such an absolute level of just actual freedom in the game that lets you build whatever wanders into your mind as long as you can create it with some amalgamation of rectangles and circles at the very least. At first, the building tools can seem relatively simple. You can make sort of house-shaped buildings, you can determine the actual dimensions of it, but it is locked to a rectangular shape. Then there are towers, which are cylindrical in nature. If you right-click on buildings you have placed, though, you get a ton of extra control over them, including their specific shape whether they have roof tiling or just end in a nice castle as topping, how tall they are in either of those senses, and you can even raise the bottom of the structure up above ground level to do things like a raised walkway above a river, or connecting two separate main structures with a sort of makeshift bridge. You can do this same right-click edit function with pretty much anything else that you can create in the world as well for much deeper control. Things like windows or doors you can both change the shape of, you can even have something like a bay window, you can have a double window, you can have a single door, a double door, a wide single door, you can change the shape and the size of these entirely as well on top of that, on top of putting them just precisely where you want to in your actual building area. There is a very easy to use and intuitive undo and redo system in the game as well, so there's no real point of stress that you can mess anything up because it just doesn't exist in the game. It is from the ground up created to be a lovely little relaxing, stress reducing experience. A pleasant break from the real world to just let yourself immerse into this beautiful, tiny little glade. The amount of interest that you will have in this game and the longevity that it will have for you as well is entirely only limited by your own imagination and how much you enjoy putting together beautiful little villages or towns. You can change the season that you're building in to dramatically alter the aesthetics of the game. You can also manually change the color of any building that you place, as well as allowing for things like my dreamlike pink cliffside castle, which brings me to the next interesting thing in the game too, which are sort of daily theme builds like cliffside castle. These aren't an actual competitive thing like you would have with like a daily challenge run in a roguelike or something. They are just things that the developer puts in as a sort of starter template area that is the same for every player changing each day, rather than just loading in with a random procedurally generated beginning like you normally would within the game. The whole idea of this is to just provide a sort of slight base of inspiration for your next project, for you to jump off of and create something awesome. If you actually zoom into things as well when you're in the game, you can essentially go to ground level in like a first person mode too, and the detail on things is sort of staggering. The art style is cartoony and cute, and it works wonders for it even when you're zoomed in like this, and with the amount of detail just making it feel gorgeous to move around through as well, even at this zoomed in level. There's also of course things like fences and brick walls. There are pathing tools for you to create paths, which also smooth out the ends of buildings, so you can even use the top of a building as the bottom of a path if you want to. There's also of course also things like terrain modifiers, so you can raise or lower the ground where you want to, to actually edit the height of your areas, a water tool for creating your own watery zones, like a pond or even a river that heads through your entire village, and whether you just want to build one like giant mansion-like house or castle, or if you would rather just build a quaint little village, those are entirely your choices. And one of the best parts, it's really, really easy to just hop out and start an entire new project. Aside from the daily challenge, there are five options which essentially count as seasons, each of them has a different 
different aesthetic that you can choose from. One of them's a really nice winter zone with a lot of snow. One of them's a lot more flowery than normal. One of them's autumn with all the trees with the leaves falling off of it and it looks beautiful. And each time that you build within a new one of these tiny glades, it essentially starts a different save. Your progress is immediately saved whenever you pause the game. And from the load button, you get a very clear picture of what has been built in each of your saves. So you can easily go back to an old setup anytime you want all the way back to the first one you ever made. Again, the main idea of this game, the main thing it's trying to give you is cutting out anything that could be considered an obstacle, giving you as many tools as possible, and then just letting you create this absolutely adorable world around it and sending you out on your own to do whatever you want within it. This game has no objective for you other than fun. It has no hidden mechanics, no lost collectibles to find. It is what it is, and what it is, is lovely. All in all, there's no real point to this game. And if you're someone that thinks that's a problem, then you're not really getting the points of the game. It's hard to describe past what I already have, and it's hard to really define how it feels by just showing you it in the background. And hopefully I've done a decent job of that with my words. It is absolutely just absorbing in the most sort of chill, fun way. It may not be something that takes your main focus for hours on end, that making you just fully just zoomed into it, your face could not possibly turn away, but it's just a sort of nice, casual thing to do. Maybe you're watching some TV on your other monitor, you're watching a show, you're watching some YouTube videos, maybe you're cooking and you have breaks for a few minutes at a time. Maybe you're in a really irritating work meeting at your work from home job, and you just sort of boot this game up on your other screen to keep you from blowing a gasket. I wouldn't judge, I think it's a good thing. It keeps your creativity flowing, it gives you an outlet for your imagination while you play, it gets your little puzzle solving brain going just a little bit to try and figure out how to actually create the stuff in game that you see within your head, and then when it all comes together, it just looks so lovely. It really just draws you in and feels like it rewards your effort just in general. Even if you are quote unquote bad at this type of game, and sure it's not exactly right to say people are good or bad at a creative city builder, but I've seen people build just crazy ass buildings that would sell for like millions upon millions of dollars in the real world. And here I am making a village off of a doodle I did of a cow made out of a brick wall fence around it and I just put stuff inside of it. And I connected that onto something completely unrelated to it too. And it still just looks sort of super quaint and homely when you actually look at it properly. And part of that is entirely due to just the aesthetic choices of the game itself being so sort of natural in a way. Even when you build a brick building, there is still vegetation overtaking it at least a little bit. There's still trees surrounding you. There's flowers that you can put on the paths. And the whole feel of this makes even things that were placed with little to no thought feel like they fit in quite nicely. And I adore that. There is no right or wrong in Tiny Glade. It's only what do you want to do and what do you want to make with tons of tools to help you make it happen rather than making it harder. That's just about it for today then everyone. I just wanted to talk a little bit about Tiny Glade, a brand new game that released yesterday that sort of popped up into my life and I am having a great time with it so far. And I just wanted to sort of share this game with you all, whether you've seen it or not, maybe you've heard of it, but now you've heard my own impressions and seen some gameplay of it all playing out too. The game is currently on sale to celebrate its launch as well, so maybe check it out sooner rather than later if it's something that you're interested in. But this isn't like a sponsored video or anything, it's just a game that I really think deserves a bit more praise and a bit more attention. Like if you liked the video, subscribe to the notification bell for more, and most importantly, ladies and gentlemen, until next time, stay sweet. Josh, Cotton, and Hollow with the videos Dropping the humor like a hammer on your tippy toes Bringing entertainment on a daily arrangement To take our insanity and turn it into entertainment Yes, I said entertainment twice To reiterate that it is nice To look into your faces on a mostly daily basis When you let us in your homes to make the whole world our stage Is, uh, goodbye